This is Twit. Who's an expert here on quantum computing? You can explain what time ah, crystals yes. are. Okay, so the second law of thermodynamics says that any spontaneous change is going to trend towards entropy. In other words, things get more disordered. That's just the natural flow of it's things. It's why you, you can't have a perpetual motion machine. Precisely. Unless you pour more energy into the system, it will just slowly become more disordered. So the time crystals, these things are amazing. They cycle through patterns, which means they will go ordered, disordered, ordered, disordered, all without additional input of energy into the system. In other words, it completely breaks the second law of thermodynamics, which is, it, it's just a mind-blowing thing. Uh, I have no idea what the practical applications are, but the science behind it is amazing. <laughs> so Google says, they, this is a preprint they, they posted uh, Thursday night, that in collaboration with physicists from Stanford, Princeton, and other universities, they've used Google's quantum computer to create and demonstrate a genuine time crystal. This is actually the second time crystal that's been created. Uh, earlier this month, a separate group claimed to have created a time crystal in a diamond, evading the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, I guess, uh, first of all, I think quantum computing is cuckoo, but now this is even <laughs> cuckooer. Uh, what a brave new world we're, uh, we're about to enter. How close are we to getting quantum computers actually uh, doing any real work besides making time crystals? China's making the, the biggest advancements in quantum computing right now. Really? So, I mean, uh -oh. there you'd want to be looking at their think tanks. Yep, yep. Wesley and IBM, both IBM and Google have done some right. some amazing things. Right. Uh, I'm just amazed that we are the same human race that is coming out with these kind of um, breakthrough and yet struggles to put a mask on properly. So, <laughs> as that. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, I don't. Maybe there's never been a time in human history where there's a greater gulf between <sighs> the the smartest people and the dumbest people <laughs> i don't there's probably never been a uh, a time that the, the difference is so great but maybe that is actually a sign of a cultural problem uh it's kind of like the haves and the have-nots um it's not just money you maybe have education and have not education i don't know is that a should there be such a gulf Seems like that's well, I mean, a bad sign. Te technically, our, our corpus of knowledge continues to grow, and uh, communications technology puts most of that body of knowledge at the fingertips it's of people right who there. have access to it. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, knowledge, the corpus of knowledge, doesn't mean understanding of that knowledge. And that's I think that's really where the, the gulf is. Everyone can access everything. That doesn't mean that you're going to know what you're accessing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have no idea when they say it's uh, that, that, that we have a newly realized phase of matter in which particles move in a regular repeating cycle without burning any energy. But uh, there's a picture. <laughs> you... <laughs> it's basically a perpetual motion machine. Yeah. Wow. Um, and how do we get them? Now, why did the, So the quantum computer is just doing the math? Did it actually make a time crystal? No. It, so it it's... They're, anytime someone says quantum, the, all they really mean is that they're pushing past our known boundaries of physics. Yeah, uh, Quantum computing is just a way of doing non-binary computing. Rather right. than ones and zeros, you can have an infinite number of values, right. which would speed up operation if we actually had software that could properly use that kind of processing power. Right. This is the same thing. We're going quantum in that we're, we're not following the rules of physics as established in, in Newtonian physics. So, you know, quantum, you know, it's a it's the Rick and Morty episode where you say you can't just say quantum in front of something and make it a sci-fi term. That's It's not like blockchain doing. where you can just say it in front of everything and everything's better. Well, no, magically. no, there's quantum blockchain. Now that <laughs> is a game changer. So, uh I'm try I'm reading this article trying to figure out what Google did. Did they make We're all trying to figure it yeah, out. Did they make <laughs> one of these they they did the math behind one of these. It's unclear. I don't think the computer can make anything. Um, so. I just want to chime in saying any claim about quantum and Google 
wait. Yeah, that's my they've feeling. Ar- they've, they've already made mistakes in terms of the reporting yeah. of what they've said in yeah. the past around quantum computing. Yeah. This could be something where it says, oops, we checked the numbers. We carried a one wrong. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah. I'm not sure. This doesn't make sense to me, but I, if it's true, that's amazing. Like I said, there is a bigger gulf than ever before in human history between the, the big brains and the little brains. And I'm afraid I'm tending in the wrong direction at this point. So, uh, for, for anyone who's struggling understanding quantum like like I am, um, there was a video that uh, Michael Pena, the, the actor, did for Google where I don't, I encourage everybody to go and find it. And I can put in the notes the link yeah, to the Yeah, we saw it during uh, the last Google I.O. Yeah, I, I think that I don't want to understand quantum in, in a different way than that because it was, uh, <laughs> uh, it was you know, definitely was... a, um, every, for every man. Yeah. Um, I feel like, uh, I mean, I think, I don't know. I've hey, been, Sundar, how's it going? There, there he is here, the way, by the way, Michael Pena, in the That's Google a, Quantum yeah. Lab. Hey, um, hey, I'm Eric, lead engineer here. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to one of the most powerful quantum computing facilities. In yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think some of this is because that the Chinese government is doing it, so the federal government is pumping billions of dollars into quantum computer research, and a lot of these companies are going, hey, yeah, let's get some of that federal money. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I'm a skeptic, but uh, Father Robert, you, you're a little bit more a believer in the cutting edge. Do you think this is actually going to, in, in 10 or 20 or 50 years, there's going to be a quantum computer that could do something. Absolutely. Okay. I, I mean, uh, look, it's it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. We need to understand it enough so that we can design equipment and software and a different way of thinking that can utilize it. Th this is this is no different than what we did with the space program or what we did with the right. Industrial Revolution. Yeah, but the, it's, yeah, it's, this is a yeah. little more out there, though, don't you think? Well, I mean, show a, a phone to someone from the 1700s yeah. and they think it's witchcraft. Well, what's the quote? Any sufficiently advanced technology will seem like magic. Yeah. That, I'm not remembering that properly. But I, yes, that's uh, uh, Arthur C. Clarke's, and it's pretty close, I think. Any sufficiently advanced technology will seem like magic. Is indistinguishable. It, from indistinguishable magic. from magic.